Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to make a homing missile that focuses the player or if you want anything else homing missile is a missile that uh, follows the player let's get started so I got here this sprite of a missile and I'm going to drag it into the scene and let's give it some components uh, let's give it a rigid body 3D make it kinematic let's also give it a box collider 2D and you can leave it like this or you can shape it as however you want I'm going to make it smaller like that that's just personal preference and for now that's it oh by the way because this missile wants to target the player I'm going to make it deadly so that whenever it, it hits the player it will make the player lose lives so, so right now let's add a script home homing missile like so open okay in the script what we're going to do is to make a way for the missile to know if it wants to turn to to turn to the right like like so to the right or to the left in order to focus to go towards the player so i'm going to give it first some variables here so public float speed and I'm going to make it by default 5 I'm going to also give it a, a turning speed or a rotating speed public float rotating speed equals to 200 and also a target public game object Oops. target which will be the player and also I'll give it a reference for the rigid body just to make it a little bit optimized which body to the RB just like that now on the start I'm going to set the target to be the player so target equals game object dot find object with tag player and of course you have to make sure that your player also has this tag as you can see my my player which is that little guy over there has the tag so just do that and also I'm going to make the RB equal to the rigid body component of this missile just like that now uh, you can on update or on fixed update uh, fixed update is better because it will be more uniform for every screen or every computer what we want to do is to rotate the missile in one direction or another. Well, uh, you would think you could use a vector 2 dot angle, which gives you an angle between two, two vectors. And if it will be positive, it will go in one direction. But if it will be negative, it will go on another direction. But because Unity only gives positive values, this is not a valid solution. So what we're going to use instead is a thing which will be the, the cross product and what a pro cross product is is a vector just like this one the, the blue vector that is generated according to the angle between the two other vectors now as you can see this blue vector is always perpendicular to both the other vectors and what these other two vectors will be uh, is the direction of the missile so if I put this like this and on local the direction of the missile is this this red vector so the first vector will be this red vector which rotates according to the direction of the, the missile and the green vector will be the vector that points to the player so the vector that it's not being shown here but the vector that points from here to here to the player and has magnitude 1 so what we're going to do is if the as you can see if they are above if they have uh, at maximum plus 180 degrees of difference like this way the, the the blue vector is positive like I can see but if they are minus 180 degrees or more than 180 degrees like in this part over here when the green vector is on this side the blue, the blue vector as you can see always goes down so if it goes down the 
missile will rotate in another direction. So that's kind of a rough explanation about uh, cross product and how we'll be using it. Now let's apply it to here. So first thing, let's create that the vector that points from the missile to the player. So vector two point to target vector two transform dot position, which is the position of the missile minus also as a vector two target dot transform dot position and this will be a vector that points to the player so like that in this case and you want to normalize it so that the blue vector here can only be one or minus one and not some weird values above that so point to point to target dot normalize and now we want to make the cross product so the cross product is an operation that can only be done on 3D space, so we use vector free dot cross, and you put here the two vectors that we that we want: the point to target, which is in the red vector, or the green one. It just doesn't really matter the order. I mean, it does, but it's not very important right now. And the the direction that that uh, my missile is facing. So in this case, the missile is facing transform dot right. Because as you can see right now, if I'm on local space, the the green vector, which is the vector that always points to the right, is where the missile is facing its pointy part. Done. Okay. But we don't want the the vector itself. We want the z the v, the z value. Because, because as you can see here, we have a, this will generate a vector similar to this blue vector over here, but with a different uh, magnitude or size or whatever you want to call it. And we only want the z value of it, not the x nor the y, because those will be will be zero. So we want the z, and this will be the value that change that sets whether the direction is going to the right or to the left. So I can put here float value equals to that just to simplify stuff and of course semicolon there save and right now we have a value and now we can set whether the missile is going to side or the other side. So if the value is greater than zero meaning the, the blue value is like that, is up. Then we want the rigid body dot angular velocity, and this, this is the property of the of the rigid body that we can change equals the rotating speed. Just like that. Else if the value is smaller than zero. Then we want the rb dot angular velocity to be equal to minus rotating speed, so it will rotate in the other direction. Else, we want it to have no rotation because if the value is zero, then it's pointing towards the player and there's nothing to be done. Okay, that's done. And now all we have to do left is to, to set the rigid body velocity the velocity of the missile to be equal to the velocity that we set there on top so rigid body dot velocity equals to a vector that points to the right because that's where the missile is always facing in its local coordinates times the speed just like that and just like that we made a missile uh, right now it has no collisions we'll take the care of the, all, that, all that stuff later now let me just show you that it's working properly Okay, so here on the missile, as you can see, this, that stuff is set. If I play now, it will follow the player. And as you can see, it does circular motions, which is cool. But what if you want it for be less regular? For instead of making these little circles when it when it's not hitting the player, for him to go a little bit in a different trajectory. So let me show you that in a second. 
if instead of having this this code that we just typed here uh, that that has always to be there instead of having this we put here rb dot angular velocity equals the rotate speed or the speed to rotate times the value that we got from there and this way the the closest the closest the missile is to, for, to face the player, the less it rotates. So it will smoothly rotate to the player when it's actually pointing to it. As you can see right now, uh, if it's not pointing to the player, it rotates very quickly. But if it's rotating to the player, it goes smoothly into the player. Not like before where it will go in perfect circles. And that's it. Now let's add just some particles, some wait for the missile to delete itself and we're done first let me make the missile disappear so I'm going to make it a trigger and on trigger enter 2d so write on trigger enter 2d collider 2d uh, other I want to destroy the missile and of course you can prevent the missile from from destroying if it hits another missile and you can actually do that if other dot tag is different from deadly which will be which would be another missile that it will hit then we, we want to always delete the missile so destroy this dot game object and we can set up the time to be to not be exactly right now because sometimes this would mess up the collision detection and sometimes it wouldn't uh, register the collision onto the player and the player wouldn't lose lives so if you put there that value there or something bigger to always detect it save and let's also add some particles to it and some sound I actually got here some sound that I'm going to put it on right now it's just a sound that is psh. and this will play on awake let me, let me show you how it looks this is the psh, like it's launching the missile and let's add some particles to it add component particle system and there you go we'll add some particles but I want them to be still so the speed will be zero and I want them to be squares so I'm going to, I'm going to, to render here and go into the squares and of course they are too big so change the size maybe to 0.1 volt and let's stop and simulate again okay it looks better uh, maybe speed 0 is not ideal maybe 2 there you go and on the shape as you can see they have a very big shape so let's make it smaller and maybe give it um, less time to live two seconds and color over lifetime this is just stuff that you can do you can also not do whatever change the alpha to zero like that and finally just change the the particle system to be set on world space and now if I hit play you'll see that some cool particles are instantiated <laughs> of course if you want more particles you can add more particles if you want less particles you can add less particles you can do whatever you want and that's today's tutorial just to finalize I'm going to change it to homing missile and turn it into a prefab and I can also put here multiple missiles just to show you that they don't collide with each other because of the code we did so right now as you can see multiple missiles are turning into us and they have these weird cool trajectories and that's it thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial